Hello, my name is Chrissy Hodges. I'm an advocate for OCD, in particular, the name Pure OCD, which is the community name for individuals who live with intrusive thoughts and mental rituals. It's also in the name of my memoir, Pure OCD, The Invisible Side of Obsessive Compulsive Disorder. I am a certified peer support specialist, working with people around the world, providing support in whatever stage of recovery they are in. And in fact, in my practice, I also provide groups, eight-week closed groups, and I have an online community of individuals uh, so they can meet other people. We have um, weekly support groups and events uh, that help you connect and create community, which can absolutely help in the healing process of OCD. Want to give a special shout out of thanks to NoCD for letting me share, um, especially this video tonight about taboo intrusive thoughts. Um, I love this platform. So much appreciate uh, the folks over at NoCD. Stephen Smith, the founder, is one of my really, really good friends. Um, so much love to him and to all of the people over there working tirelessly uh, to help connect us all around the world. Appreciate you. Um, this is one of my favorite topics. So I'm very excited to talk about this, especially coming up on OCD Awareness Week um, this month. Um, taboo intrusive thoughts when it comes to OCD. I have a very special place in my heart for individuals that live with taboo intrusive thoughts. Now, I also want to give a disclosure and a little reminder that in this video, I'm going to talk about a lot of things that might seem a little bit inflammatory because that is taboo intrusive thoughts. I'll explain that in a minute. But also, I am going to make some generalizations about how individuals who struggle with taboo intrusive thoughts may have specific things that happen because they have taboo intrusive thoughts. If you have other themes and you're listening to this and you think, well, I have that too. It's not just taboo intrusive thoughts. Um, I am not saying that it is not. I just want to make sure to have the distinction that sometimes taboo intrusive thoughts um, have a little bit of a different experience, uh, people that with taboo intrusive thoughts have a little bit of a different experience. They have um, a few different layers of things they may need to work on um, that help with the healing process, that help with the recovery um, and some barriers when it comes to treatment. And I will get into that. So first, what are taboo intrusive thoughts? Well, first of all, Intrusive thoughts are thoughts that are intrusive, <laughs> thoughts that you don't want, thoughts that are disturbing, thoughts that make you go, hmm, that pause. Yes, I just threw that in because I am old. <laughs> and I can't believe I actually just said that. And I kind of want to edit it out because I'm embarrassed. I'm red. <laughs> no, th thoughts that make you pause and go, okay, well, why did I have that? So these, these are they sometimes are not even disturbing. They're just thoughts that you just think, why did I have those? Now, when this happens, when you have OCD, you might have these thoughts, but then you are likely go going to start doing compulsions around them. What are the compulsions doing? So mental compulsions, we're talking rumination, mental review, avoidance, um, reassurance seeking, just to name a few. Now, all of a sudden, these compulsions are coming in to the, this in, these intrusive thoughts trying to prove why I had them. What do they mean? Are they true? Am I this or am I not this? Right. So this is kind of the, that, that just a long winded definition of what we think, what we think about when we talk about pure O, pure OCD, intrusive thoughts, mental rituals. And it's typically doing the rituals and doing the compulsions, trying to find some sort of proof, trying to see if what you actually thought or how you're feeling or the images or whatever are real or not. And this can be really terrifying because when you're having intrusive thoughts that are taboo, scary, things that you are, are absolutely leaps and bounds from what who you are and what your character is, it can be really terrifying a, to experience those and think, is this part of who I am and or could I be that person or is this what I secretly want? Am I in denial? Blah, blah, blah. B, what if people knew? What would they think about me? What if people thought that this is who I was and didn't believe it was OCD? Which thing can then go into the realm of, I don't even deserve happiness. I don't deserve to laugh. I don't deserve anything because I had the audacity to think these things. And that, my friends, can haunt you and haunt you and haunt you. Before I get into this, I want to say OCD happened to you. Do not forget that. 
I know that you probably sit there and spin and go, if I only hadn't have seen this, if I only hadn't have done this, there's got to be some sort of reason why this happened to me. I've got to uncover something, you know, that makes me believe that I deserved it. You didn't do anything wrong. This happened to you. It was not your fault, no matter what the theme. I know you don't believe me, <laughs> but listen to it again. It's not your fault. This is happening to you, okay? So just hold that really tight to yourself right now and do your best to try to believe it and have compassion around the fact that this disorder is hard and it happened to you. Um, okay, with that said, let's talk about taboo. I define taboo intrusive thoughts as and this can also depend on the country. So let's make sure that we understand that some taboo intrusive thoughts um, can be taboo in one country and not necessarily taboo in the other country. We're not going to get into all that. And we're not going to get into all like the cancel culture stuff. There are countries where sexual orientation can be taboo. That doesn't mean that you have to believe that it is, but for people in certain countries, it can be very dangerous and so people can consider that taboo in the element that you can't talk about it out loud and you can't tell your family and the fear of coming out can have dangerous consequences. Now, I understand that that can also happen in America as well, but we don't consider sexual orientation, any fears around that, no matter what, we don't consider that taboo, but I want to make the point that in some countries, it's going to be considered taboo based on the fact that you can't talk about it and you can't tell anyone about that. So just know that as I'm moving into this, um, taboo in general, I would consider if you're sitting in a coffee shop and you're starting to talk about these topics, you're going to lower your voice. You're not going to want anyone to hear you around you because that is going to be an inflammatory topic. So probably the big three I'm going to focus on are going to be pedophilia, uh, incest, bestiality, but that's not all. I mean, we've got necrophilia. We've got all kinds of things like, you know, harm, harm is taboo, you know, the murder, like harm. I'm not going to say all the things cause I don't want to trigger you, but anything around those things, um, that you'd kind of lower your voice because the terms in general are inflammatory. Okay, so when it's inflammatory, what that means is we typically from a young age are programmed to have a visceral reaction to these topics. I mean, y'all, pedophilia, that word in general is going to garner some sort of inflammatory response from almost anyone anywhere. And so that in itself, you know, incest, BCL, pedophilia, that in itself is a first barrier. The fact that even saying it out loud is too much for people presents number one barrier for people. Uh-oh, why am I having these intrusive thoughts? Why am I having this? I can't even say it out loud. I have a visceral reaction to it, right? So if I'm having a visceral reaction, but uh-oh, now I'm having intrusive thoughts about it, what does that mean about me? And what does that say about me as a person? So here we are with the first barrier, right? So then there's this other shame around it, guilt around it. Now, I'm not saying that you don't have shame and guilt around any other intrusive that you can have that about relationship OCD, you know, about sexual orientation OCD. You can have it about, you know, anything OCD, but I mean, I have it about emetophobia, which is the fear of vomit. But when it comes to taboo intrusive thoughts, there has been some research come out in the last few years, specifically by uh, therapists um, and researchers that treat OCD, where taboo intrusive thoughts in particular have a degree of shame where shame becomes a barrier to treatment. So if you are experiencing this, it is a real thing. It is something that you want to address with a therapist. I need to deal with the shame around this. What do we mean when we say shame? I mean, shame around just having the thoughts in general, shame around having the thoughts for the first time, 
Shame around what kind of person thinks these kind of thoughts. Shame around if anybody knew, what would they think about me? How am I going to live with myself even if I get effective treatment? Do I even deserve treatment? Or should I suffer for the rest of my life just for the simple fact that I had these thoughts in the first place? How am I ever going to have a family, if, you know, with pedophilia theme or incest theme? Um, how am I ever going to have pets? How am I ever going to care for something? I mean, it is pervasive and it's okay to ask or share with your therapist, my shame is getting in the way of this. The shame is too big to actually engage in the behavioral therapy. A lot of times for people with taboo intrusive thoughts, they really do think to themselves, well, not everybody, but just in general, a lot of times people think I don't deserve to get better because the fact that I would even have these thoughts, these images, feelings around the thoughts, as we know, you can have physical feelings around intrusive thoughts and images, groinal syndrome, uh, you know, urges, things like that when it comes to harm. I mean, urges when it comes to sexual intrusive thoughts too. You know, if I've had these, I do not deserve to get better. And if people knew that I would, I was capable of having these, what would they think about me? Only a monster would have these. Only this horrible person would have these thoughts because what you're doing is all of a sudden now, whatever the intrusive thought is, is that you're comparing yourself to what that is in your mind as this inflammatory topic. And with a lot of intrusive thoughts, we don't get that. And I'm going to use like sexual orientation as an example. When I had sexual orientation, OCD, um, so I identify as straight and I was having intrusive thoughts about whether I was gay. I did not care. You know, I mean, I did not care if like, I did not think there was anything wrong with being gay. If I were gay, I would embrace it. I mean, I did live in the South and it was in the nineties at that point, but I remember thinking to myself, like, I will figure out a way to move somewhere where it is acceptable and I will live this lifestyle and it will be, but I just didn't want that. Right. So that where, that was where the, it was intrusive, but at the end of the day, <clears throat> there was no, it was not inflammatory to me. If I had at that point, <clears throat> excuse me, had had intrusive thoughts about being a murderer or intrusive thoughts about being a pedophile or you know, I actually did have intrusive thoughts about being in, uh, incest, but I won't get into that. But like the, that in my eyes was inflammatory. That is not something that I would ever be okay identifying with. And so there's a barrier right there of like, at the end of the day, I cannot accept that there is a maybe I am. I cannot accept that and I won't accept it. And so a lot of times we're, we're, we're bumping up against that and people getting treatment when they find out that like, I have to accept the uncertainty that I might, you know, ha be attracted to my kids. Nope. I'm not going to get therapy. I'm not going to, because I'm not going to put anything at risk, any like people with POCD aren't at risk. That was some reassurance, but whatever you're, you're not risking harming anyone, you know, Dr. Stephen Phillipson has said this in so many videos. Like if he needed a babysitter, he would call someone with POCD first <laughs> and same, but I don't have kids, but like, you know what I'm saying? Like, because, but you're not a risk, but at the end of the day, like that's a barrier to treatment too, is when we hear these messages of like, you have to accept uncertainty, you have to do, you know, then people will be like, nope, I'm not going to. And this is why now we are so lucky that we're starting to have real trauma-informed therapists that do acceptance commitment therapy, you know, that are really working with the shame around it, that are really working with making your fears irrelevant instead of having to say, oh, maybe I'm this, maybe I'm that. No, because with taboo intrusive thoughts, that can get in the way of wanting to even seek out therapy. The other thing is with taboo intrusive thoughts, community is so important. Knowing other people have your theme 
is really, really important because this is a, these are themes that make you feel so isolated for all the reasons I've listed. And, and, and I'll emphasize again, I cannot tell anyone that I had these thoughts in case they think I'm a monster, in case someone calls the cops on me, in case I get arrested, in case, you know, everybody abandons me, I'm going to end up in jail, whatever. People sometimes feel like they can't take the risk. So meeting other people that have these themes is so important because now you get to see that there are normal everyday people walking around that have these intrusive thoughts and they have normal lives, even though they also think they're alone and isolated <laughs> and they aren't horrible people. They aren't monsters. They are good People, I'm going to tell you something. I run a POCD group and every single group, I am just amazed at, at, at how people live with this horrible theme and they live their life and they, they you know, accomplish their dreams they have families that, you know, if they want to, and they, you know, do the things that they need to do. And sometimes in that, you know, up to your ears in fear. And I love watching them be able to meet other people that see, oh my gosh, you don't have to do this alone anymore. You don't have to walk alone in this anymore. And it's like the shame melts, the guilt melts, right? It, it, it's, it's still a tough experience having these intrusive thoughts, but community connection is so important. And I know that no CD offers that. I know that they, they have specific areas on the apps that you can even go and connect with other people. I encourage you to do it. I know you're scared. I know it's hard because you're scared to find out that yours is different that your symptoms aren't the same as everybody else's. And that must mean that, you know, yours is real. And that's why people, another barrier is I cannot go to treatment and find out that this is not OCD. And I know we all worry it's not OCD, but people with taboo intrusive thoughts really do worry because the risk, they feel like the risk is too big. I cannot find out that this is OCD or that this is not OCD. I cannot find that out because I couldn't live with myself. If this were, and, and, you know, in a, again, and I'm not going to compare things, but I kind of am, you know, at the end of the day for many of us, you know, you can live with yourself with a lot of things. Am I in the wrong relationship? You know, am I going to vomit? Am I going to, you know, you know, all so many other themes. I'm not saying that those aren't horrible and terrible, but there is just something different about the taboo intrusive thoughts of like, I cannot, I mean, like from a societal standpoint. So it's so important for you to meet other people. It's so important for you to see that everyday upstanding citizens that function, you know, from the outside perspective, I'm, I'm just saying like on the inside, they might be like having all these intrusive thoughts, but like you were just like that. I love meeting people with taboo intrusive thoughts. In fact, that's the most clientele I see all over the world. And you may think it's the smallest percentage. It is not. It is not. You are not alone with this. And it does present so many different challenges. Many that I have listed tonight. And there are so many more. That doesn't make you different in the way that you're not treatable or that you should be looked at different or anything. If anything, it makes it, makes it more you should give yourself more compassion, but I know that's hard for you too. It's hard for me, but you deserve it. You deserve recovery. These thoughts are not your fault. You did not cause them. So stop going back and trying to figure out how you did it. And that there's something inherently bad about you that made this happen to you. That's not true. You just got this theme that is so hard but it has nothing to do with whether you're a good person or not. Please seek the treatment. Please seek the community. If you need to seek community first, do that. There's so many of us walking around. You do not have to walk alone in this. And lastly, I'm so sorry that you are dealing with these themes. 
because they do have a lot of extra layers of stuff that you will probably have to work through to heal. But that doesn't mean recovery is not possible because it absolutely is. And you can do it. And you are worthy of it. So thanks for being here and thanks for listening. I know that this may have hit a lot of different nerves in a lot of different ways because there's a lot of things covered. Um, But I hope that you understand that this is such an important message for the people that are out there struggling with these types of intrusive thoughts. And they need a lot of love and a lot of support. And they need to know there are different barriers that they're going to face and that they don't have to walk through those barriers alone. There's a lot of us out there that are willing to hold your hand while you walk through them. Because we had people walk through with us and it's so, so meaningful. Thank you.